everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, hopefully we are going to have a great session, um, get you guys some good information on how to mend a broken AP automation process. Uh, we hope to be joined by Melanie Bucci who is the Manager of Corporate Finance at Montage Hotels. Uh, Melanie undertook uh, a full-blown automation project uh, two years ago. And, and has some expertise in this area, and, and we're going to uh, rely on her to give us a real-life application to some of the things we talk about today. To get started, so I, I have a good base of knowledge of where you're coming from, we want to start with a simple poll question of, have you implemented AP automation in your current organization? Uh, simple yes or no, maybe some automation, or for some of you guys, what is automation? So I'm going to give you a few minutes to answer that, and then uh, we'll continue going. All right. So looks like we've had 26 responses. Let's see what our results are. So we've got yes, 38.5% of you guys, uh, no, 23%, and then some, 38.5, which is, which is about normal. Um, the reason we put in what is automation to that question is kind of humorous. You know, uh, there are some organizations that have just been very you know, hesitant to implement any sort of op automation or optimization into their processes. And automation can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. Uh, Webster defines it as the technique of making an apparatus, a process, or a system operate automatically, the state of being operated automatically, or the, the third definition which I think applies the, the best to what we are going to be talking about today is automatically controlled operation of an apparatus, process, or system by mechanical or electronic devices that take the place of human labor. Uh, when we go in and speak with different people, um, automation can mean different things to different organizations. Uh, sometimes automation is, is you know, uh, a workflow solution. Sometimes automation is simply PO matching. Sometimes automation is the front end part of the process, invoice, receipt, prep, scan. Um, so there's a lot of different parts of an AP process that, that could be considered automated. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. But automation obviously, like I said, can mean different things to different people. So we want to make sure when we go in and, or, or when you're talking about this, when you're discussing it internally, when you're discussing it with leadership, that you define what this automation is, what it's going to entail, and how it's going to affect your organization. So when it comes to automation, there's an ugly truth. And, and that truth is that often the best automation efforts that are meant to streamline processes actually create more work. They fragment the invoice processing stream into separate workflows and, and can oftentimes be more of a headache than what you were doing beforehand. Um, you know, we have seen that, tip, that at times when people automate a process, it fragments the streams into separate workflows for paper and electronic invoices, a different process for invoices submitted by web form or vendor portal, and a new category of what we call electronic paper, which are PDFs that are emailed, then they're printed, and then either scanned and sent to uh, an operator to be, uh, be keyed, or keyed directly from the printed image, and, and take what's supposed to be a, an electronic process, an automated process, and, and take it right back to step one where we're manually entering again. Um, we've also seen where people implement automation in one part of their AP process. Um, but don't really see any benefit because they, they're still doing a lot of manual work, a lot of manual workarounds. Um, you know, we, we're using old GL codes, um, you know, old sub-account codes. 
So, so you can automate one part of your process and really not see any benefit because it's, it's just adding another step. So what we're going to talk about today is, is we've implemented some automation, but we really haven't seen the benefit that we thought we were going to get. And, and we're going to talk about some things that we can do to correct those issues, uh, address some of those problems, maybe give you some quick easy fixes that could uh, you know, turn around those, those initiatives and get them where you originally thought you were going to be. Um, one of the things we're going to address first is, is why are so many people automation resistant? There was a recent IFO poll that came out, and what we found was less than 10% of the respondents have true end-to-end -end automation. And the question is why? You know, we all want to get there. Why can't we have a truly automated process that makes our life simple uh, instead of, of bits and pieces here that really just end up driving us crazy? And there's a couple reasons. Uh, number one, there's too many choices. Uh, I believe recently uh, Henry Iams from Paystream said that there's approximately 250 AP automation vendors on the market today. So when you throw, and, and I think that's a low estimate. That's probably not even taking into account the number of ERPs that have workflow. Um, so you throw all those choices in there, and, and, and they all try and, and have a unique uh, niche or, or something that separates them. But the fact of the matter is a lot of the stuff is very similar. So how do we know what we're supposed to do and what's the best product to fit what we're trying to accomplish? Do we go you know, with a true end-to-end -end solution? Do we have to do an a la carte where we're just automating bits and pieces of our processes? Um, you know, if you're involving IT, are we going to host some software? Are we going to develop a workflow in our ERP? Or are we going to outsource and have someone you know, utilize the cloud or have some provide a SaaS service for us? Uh, do we do supplier networks or do we do vendor portals? Um, do we try and do everything in-house where we can control it more, or do we outsource and get cost benefits? And then you know, are we doing native or best of breed? Those are just, that's all just trying to decide what vendor we're going to use. Then we've got to figure out how much does it cost, and, and then we've also seen a lot of organizations that they lack a unified system. Another one that I would throw on here is lack of buy-in from leadership. Um, in my experience working in the AP space, you know, we're typically viewed as a cost center and not a value add to the organization. And, and so I, I spoke with someone recently and he said, it's hard to convince my boss to spend money so that we can spend money faster. And so you know, trying to get that leadership buy-in to your, to your process improvements and into automation and optimization, it's a daunting task. And, and we found that over time it's been very hard to get um, our treasurers, our CFOs, our VPs of finance to see that this can be a good thing for the organization. So you throw all these reasons together and trying to get an AP automation initiative in, you know, through your organization is like pulling teeth. So there are a couple things we're going to talk about later on in this, this presentation about how we can address that and what we can do to try and ease that process through. Um, some of that for those, you know, we had 10 respondees I think that said they have no automation right now. So you know, we may address how do we start from scratch and, and get to an automated system. And for some of you, I believe we had 10 that said, yes, we have some automation. Um, you know, for those people, how can we add pieces or, or restructure to get the, the return on investment that we were originally looking for? Here's one of the big problems with automation. Paper is still keen. Um, you can have the greatest solutions in place. Um, you can be part of a wonderful e-invoicing you know, network, but if your it, vendors are still submitting invoices in a paper format, how do you automate that? How do you take that, that hard copy of an invoice and get it into a process that can, can actually eliminate the need for manual keying and, and entry into your system. We're seeing 20% of invoices are starting to come from PDFs. Now, typically you would think that's fantastic. 
um, you know, we're getting, we're getting invoices in electronic format. It's great, but what's happening more often than not is that um, you're printing those PDFs and then manually keying them into your system. So we're not seeing the full benefit of that. EDI and electronic right now are still a very small part of the invoice process. A couple reasons for that. Um, number one, trying to get vendors to sign up to, a, to an e-invoicing network has proven problematic. Um, the adoption rates just aren't there yet. Um, we don't know if that's going to change anytime soon. We, we still feel that moving to an electronic medium is the future. The question is, when is that future going to happen, and, and what are we going to do to, you know, to speed that process along? Um, there are some workarounds for that that we'll discuss. Um, but you know, right now, it, it, it's a wonderful frontier that's there before us. We just really haven't come up with a best practice to, to really implement that into an everyday solution. So here are most of the processes that are often automated. Uh, the invoice arrival, scan, capture, and e-invoicing. So invoices come in uh, either through a third party or, or in-house. You are open prep scanning and, and running them through an OCR data capture solution and then uploading them into your either uh, you know, AP workflow or ERP. Uh, you know, that, that's one area that we're going to focus on because we feel like that's a quick win for a lot of organizations. Um, it, can, it can take a lot of the, the cost burden out of the AP process. And it's actually an area that we feel is very, um, it's a little bit ignored right now. Uh, invoice handling, you know, generally meaning your facilitating tools, your invoice review and approval, your invoice matching, including your exception scenarios, and your invoice archiving. All these areas have automation possibilities. Uh, what you don't see is someone that's utilizing automation in all five. Typically, they're, they're doing the a la carte model and that we'll do uh, uh, an AP uh, workflow, or we'll do, uh, we've got an archive, or we've got um, you know, the PO match. I apologize. We are experiencing bad storms here out of nowhere. So I, I get kicked off for a second. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So by, back to where we were. Uh, so you think you're automated. Um, this is 75% of the, the respondents to a, a recent survey receive half or more of their invoices on paper. Only 55% are using automated workflow processes. 33% have, have invested in OCR for data capture, and 10% have realized true end-to-end -end purchase to pay. So one of the areas we want to focus on is the 33% investing in OCR for data capture. Um, if you've automated some of your workflow processes, or, or if you've utilized you know, some workflow that you have in ERP, and you're still manually entering the data from your invoices into the system, you're really not getting the full capability of what that solution can do for you. This is actually a common occurrence that we see out in the market. This is an example one of a decentralized automated slash manual process. So we see invoices received in the field or multiple locations. So that can mean a lot of different things for different people. Um, for we, we deal uh, with a bunch of hospitality groups where their invoices go out to hotels. And Melanie's going to speak to this in, when we get to uh, further along in the, in the presentation. But invoices go out and, and they sit out in your locations. You have no visibility into what they're doing. You, you know, they could be sitting on somebody's desk. They could be, you, know, uh, you could have someone holding on to an invoice so that it doesn't uh, hit that month's uh, p and 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 they can put it on next month's P&L or however long. So you, you've got lost invoices, uh, invoices stuck out in workflows that you just you have no visibility into. Once those invoices are received, the 
someone out in the field manually enters data either into a third-party AP software or directly into the ERP. Once that is done, then the software matches if there's a, a PO. If there's a non-PO, then they're routed for approval. Now, that can be done automatically in some system. Others, you route for approval manually. Um, it, it's still electronically being routed, but you're having to push that invoice where it needs to go. Exceptions are then handled by corporate AP, and then invoices eventually post to the ERP for aging or payment. And sometimes, but not always, the invoice can be scanned for archive purposes. This, this example is, is one that we run into quite often. Um, and just to see, I wanted to ask this question. Is this AP process similar to any of your current situations? I'll give you guys a few Wow, overwhelming. Give a few more seconds. We may have some late responders. So 66.7% of you, this is your current process. Now, like I said, it's not necessarily surprising to me because this is what we see a lot of. Um, the beauty of this situation is there's actually an easy fix to allow you to get the full benefit of your current AP workflow no matter what you're using. Um, there are a lot of, of vendors out there that are capable of a couple things. Depending on the size of your organization and the number of invoices that come in, that a lot of times determines what your options are. If, if you're a, a small to medium-sized entity, uh, let's say you're doing anywhere from you know, a, a few hundred invoices a month to uh, 25, 30,000 invoices a month, there are options where you can have somebody actually receive those invoices for you in a centralized location, open, prep, scan, <coughs> do data capture, and then present the data and your, um, your images into your AP workflow or your ERP. What that does is it eliminates any need to do manual data entry, and it also ensures that your invoices are entered in a timely manner and you have better visibility into the process. These, these solutions um, using a third-party vendor can usually be implemented rather quickly. <coughs> excuse me, um, at a very low cost, and, and you can see quick benefits, uh, you know, a quick ROI on something like this. Here is another example of, of an AP organization that we typically run into. So these people have centralized the receipt of all their invoices. They're scanning, but they don't have OCR technology. So what they do is they scan, because they do want to be able to archive these electronic images for, for audit purposes or, or other uh, needs down the road. But, so they scan and then they provide an image to AP for data entry. The AP team takes these images, manually enters the data into AP software or ERP, and, and here we go, same, same setting. Uh, it, you know, POs are matched. <coughs> The non-PO invoice is routed for approval, exceptions handled by corporate, invoices are posted, and then images are pushed to archive. Now, for archive purposes, these images have to be indexed at some point. So, so that can be a manual step in an automated process that has to be done. Um, the, the receipt of the invoices is a, at a centralized location alleviates one of the, the negatives in that you're able to see what's coming in in a timely manner and it, and it, it eliminates invoices being lost in the field. Um, the scanning allows you to, you know, once again, we've got the paper into an electronic format. You can push that around either email or other things if needed, but you're still doing that manual data entry. Um, in this instance, 
you know, OCR software might be an option for you. Once again, it, it's going to come down to the, the volume, your IT shop, what they're wanting, you know, what, what your corporate culture is, uh, how they view things. But you know, OCR software could be an answer here. Now one of the things you need to remember when you purchase OCR, it's still a software. It's still fallible. So you still have to have humans sitting behind the software doing QA and data correction on the, on the images and, and invoice data before it goes into your system. So OCR software license alleviates a lot of the manual data entry, but you're still going to have to have some humans you know, eyeballing that after the fact. So let's see, is, do, do any of you guys have a process like this in your current situation? All right, so a little, little, this is a little more evenly spread. We've got about 57% still going up. So we've got more. We have 16 responded yes and 13 responded no. Um, these are the two most common instances that we run into when we're talking about someone who says they're automated but they're not fully end-to-end. -end. Um, that manual data entry part, that, that is an area we're going to focus on. And, and Melanie, when we talk, is going to be able to give us a lot more insight into to the, what they were facing in a, a very similar circumstance. Theirs was decentralized, and she'll speak to that. But in the centralized model, you're obviously receiving some benefits from getting those invoices in one location. But as long as you're manually entering, which you know, 17 respondees are still manually entering their invoices in this situation, you're not getting that full benefit of your, your AP automation. So we would consider it still broken. Um, let's go to this. So here is a true end-to-end -end automated solution. In this, once again, invoices received at a central location. Now, what, this could be your own uh, corporate mail uh, you know, location. Uh, this could be a third-party provider that does a, a service bureau, if you want to call it that. Um, you know, once again, there's a lot of providers out there that offer this service. They're received at a central location. They're scanned, and data capture is performed. Whether that's OCR, keying, um, onshore, offshore, there's, so, there's a lot of options in that area that you can take advantage of. But once the invoices are scanned and the data is captured, the images and data are uploaded directly into your AP software. So the beauty of this is your people are never touching paper. They are they're logging into their workflow. They're logging into the ERP, and the data and the images are there. So if it's a non-PO invoice, it can be automatically routed for approval. So an invoice comes in. There's specific data that's captured off that invoice that tells the software this, this engineering invoice needs to go to Bill. And after Bill, it needs to go to John, and then it needs to go to Susan for final approval, and then it can post to the ERP for either aging or payment. Your POs are automatically matched, and that can either be a two-way or a three-way match. But once they're matched, if, if they do match, then they automatically post. We call that straight through processing. There is no human intervention whatsoever on your guy's end. Um, if they don't match, once again, they're automatically routed to exception handling. If it is a, a um, you know, let's say it's a, a cost issue, um, then it can be routed to the correct buyer to either be fixed or, you know, or they can communicate with the vendor to be re-invoiced or a credit memo or, or whatever they need to do on their end. If it's a receiving issue, it can be shipped to the receiver to verify that, yes, you know, we, we ordered 10, we only got 5. Is that correct? Make sure that's right so that we, once again we can contact back and forth with your vendor. Most true end-to-end -end automation solutions have some sort of vendor portal. Um, we didn't specify it in this slide, but typically it's there because what you're wanting to do is streamline communications uh, 
eliminate the need to have back and forth via hard copy. You want everything to be done electronic. Um, once your invoices are posted to, ERP, to the ERP for aging or payment, your images are pushed to an archive. They are already indexed, so they are searchable. You have audit trail. You have visibility. This, this is the, the holy grail of AP automation. Um, a system where you can, you can do the max amount of invoices with the minimum amount of employees. Um, you want to be able to provide an efficient, uh, accurate service for your organization that, that brings values so that you can focus on other strategic initiatives within the organization. This brings us to Montage Hotels and Melanie Bucci who is going to be joining me for a quick Q&A. Uh, Montage Hotels and Resorts is a hotel and resort management company. Uh, they were founded in 2002. <clears throat> they are designed to serve the luxury traveler. Uh, they feature an artistic collection of distinctive hotels. I have, have, have had the pleasure of staying at their Laguna Beach property and it is fantastic. Um, they do have locations throughout the continental U.S. and Hawaii. Melanie is their Director of Corporate Finance and she has been kind enough to join us and talk about her experience uh, automating their AP process. So Ellen, Melanie, can you introduce yourself and explain your role at Montage? Absolutely, Chris. Good morning or um, maybe good afternoon to some of you. Um, I am the Corporate Director of Finance for Montage Hotels and Resorts which uh, means that I play an integral role in supporting our property and hotel directors of finance, assisting with hotel finance issues as well as maintaining our um, corporate reporting and um, driving global change across, across the company. Can you um, give us a, a description of your AP processes before you implemented automation? Yes. Before uh, implementing automation, we had a decentralized structure where we had an AP clerk processing invoices at each hotel. Invoices were being mailed by the vendors to the property. Uh, you know, attention to the department head that had placed the order. We had paper scattered um, across the properties. Um, paper, you know, pieces of paper were being routed to different invoice approvers um, to sign off, and then that paper was getting routed to AP for processing. We did have a system that we were using for purchase orders, which um, integrated with our accounting system whereby purchase orders were being approved in the system, but um, uh, it was still quite, while we, we uh, had some efficiencies gained with that purchase order system, we were still handling a lot of paper okay. and, and you know, manual matching. Can you describe your AP process now? Yes. So at the beginning of 2011, I believe, 2012, beginning of 2012, we centralized. Um, we centralized, we implemented a system whereby our vendors would send all invoices to BankTech. BankTech performs um, data capture and scans the images for us. Um, which means that we and our properties and the department heads are receiving no paper or invoices. They are all going to Bank Tech. Again, Bank Tech performs the uh, data capture and scans the image, and those are sent to our procure-to-pay system, you know, interfaced with our procure-to-pay system, um, which is Birch Street. Um, our AP clerks are all now, um, we, you know, we have an AP team. We don't have AP clerks at each of our hotels. Now we have an AP team here at our corporate office. Our AP clerks, when they open our system, which is Birch Street, they, um, they see the image. They don't have to enter key invoice information because BankTech uh, performs that data capture. So AP, when they enter into our system, they see the invoice as well as um, the data entered in, which would be the amount, the vendor name, you know, key invoice data has 
interfaced into our system. So AP double checks that information and um, pushes it in, in our pre to pay system, it pushes it through the workflow for approval. Um, uh, this, our Bird Street system um, is where purchase orders are raised. So if an invoice comes in from Bank Tech into Birch Street and there's already a purchase order which has been pre-approved, um, then the system performs an automatic match. And ultimately, after um, everything's processed within Birch Street, we have a integration into Great Plains, which is our accounting system. So everything's fully integrated. Um, our accounts payable team now um, spends more time, well, I guess we get, well, we'll get to efficiencies uh, achieved, but uh, is not keying in all that data because that data capture piece um, definitely drives some efficiencies. What, what were some of the driving factors that made you guys look into automation? You know, we really wanted to, to be as efficient as possible. Um, being a centralized, you know, uh, as a hotel management company with different hotels around the United States, um, instead of having a AP clerk at each property, we believed centralizing here and at the corporate office and having a, an accounts payable team took a bit of a burden off of the properties, um, had them have to deal with less issues of training, turnover, um, whatnot. And then um, as we grew, we knew a centralized team would allow us to hopefully gain economies of scale where we could have less headcount, a smaller team assisting with each of the properties rather than one AP clerk at each hotel. Um, but the, in order to achieve that central, what we, in, in order to achieve a successful centralized structure, we needed to, um, we believed we needed to automate and especially to go paperless. Okay. Um, how did you sell this to leadership? Um, yeah, so we, we basically did a cost analysis, a return on investment, and um, going forward with a growing company, we expected um, this model to allow us to decrease headcount, to uh, decrease some costs, um, you know, ancillary costs, but storage, filing, um, we used to spend a lot of time on things like that, um, as well as from a, you know, maybe intangible as far as actual cost savings, we believe this, Im this uh, Im really improved our process by all the invoices being sent to a central location. We were really improving our relationship with vendors because now invoices weren't getting lost in the mail or misplaced or hidden under a desk. Um, from an accounting standpoint, that allowed us to improve our accounting to know what we needed to accrue for because we, we knew where the invoices were. Invoices are coming into a central location. Um, we know what's out there. We know what needs to be paid. Um, but, but I mean, ultimately, coming down to the dollars, it was a cost analysis, and we believe that this model um, did provide us cost savings. Okay. Um, were you originally looking to automate the data entry portion of the process, or did that come later? Not at the very beginning. At the very beginning, um, I think at the very beginning we entertained scanning the paper invoices ourselves um, in order to get them to the central location. So invoices that were still going to the property, or you know, packing slips that serve as invoices, which were still going to go to the properties, to um, have the property team scan them and send them to us. There was definitely a point of time where we we entertained how we could keep it in house and ultimately decided that uh, the equipment investment that was going to take, the labor costs that, that was going to take, um, and with our, um, the future growth that we expected, that, that it really was only going to work if we implemented, um, if, if we automated the data entry portion. Okay. So you, you listed some factors. Were there any others that made you realize you know, automating the front end was necessary to achieve the goals you'd set forth? Um, yeah, I mean, 
in order to in order to again like achieve all the efficiencies that we'd hoped um, again you know in those kind of intangibles that I said about improving our accounting for accruals knowing there was a specific um, a one stop or you know uh, one destination for all of the invoices um, uh, when we when we consider doing it in house and having having our purchasing teams do the scanning you know those those delivery slips or those those thin papers of uh, pieces of paper, the equipment that we would have required to to easily efficiently scan that, um, and then if we if we looked at the model that we'd hoped and we'd hoped to decrease headcount, well, having that data capture portion and having our AP clerks not have to key in amount vendor um, it, it key information, uh, really the Automating the data entry supported our goal. Okay, okay. Can can you 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 once again you've spoken to some of this, but can you can you kind of list out some of the benefits you've seen from fully implementing a straight through AP automation solution? Um, definitely. Uh, you know, um, uh, I I believe it's improved our accounting again. We know what invoices are out there. Um, we're able to accrue. Uh, you know, just uh, uh, it helps with our monthly financials, and you know, um, um, it's improved our, I believe, our relationship with our vendors. Now, when our AP team gets uh, vendor statements in, there's very few items that they need to follow up on when they're doing their their statement reconciliations. Uh, our accounts payable team now has more time to follow up on. Um, I don't want to say issues, but I feel like they're able to add more value now because they're not just inputting. They are, uh, it's, not, it's not as much clerical work, so now they're able to investigate any issues, any um, discrepancies in a, in a uh, purchase order invoice, receiving note, you know, the three-way match. They're able to look into issues. They're able to um, contact vendors in a more timely manner. Um, we, we just have a very a much more efficient, even um, uh, accounting uh, accounts payable department. We don't have a we don't have chaos at month end. Typically, previously, you know, all the papers shuffling around the hotel, and at month end, it somehow piles its way through to the AP clerk. And now there's a much more even flow uh, of invoices. Um, and we, as, as our company has grown in the last uh, six months, Montage Hotels and Resorts has begun managing four additional properties, and we haven't increased headcount, um, which is pretty incredible. It's Im impressive. Um, any recommendations you'd make to someone who's, who's trying to get this process implemented in their organization today? Um, uh, I would I would just highly recommend doing it. Um, it it has uh, you know account payable is for us um, critical to the sex, to su the success of our properties. We can't have a better relationship with vendors. We can't have overdue payments. We can't have um, anything going on hold. We uh, you know we're a hotel management company with a um, with luxury hotels focused on service, and um, we we want to we want in a, in a strange way we want accounts payable to be on to be um, to not be a worry to be the last thing on anybody in the operations mind. But in order for it not to be on their minds, we need it to be efficient and seamless and working um, without any issues. And this system has has allowed for that. We just have. Um, a really, a really great process, and I would really recommend that that other companies look at look at something like this. It makes accounts payable so so much easier. It it really does assist the finance, you know, your overall finance teams. I believe, and uh, I do think an end to end solution. If you're if you're going to do it, you've you've got to do it all the way through, a complete end-to-end. -end. You know, we had before kind of gained little efficiencies here and there with, with certain, um, you know, adding our, our purchase order system prior, prior to our end-to-end -end solution. And 
Um, I think you have to do the whole thing. Well, thank you. Um, if you don't mind hanging around in case we have some questions at the end, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to visit with us. Thank you, Chris. So what now? Um, how, how do we go from where we are now and, and, and how, you know, if we've got a broken automated process, how do we fix it? Here, here are some, current, some steps and, you know, in, in really looking through this and, and going over it this morning one last time to make sure I was ready. I'm, I might change a little bit of these around because, you know, this starts with evaluate process automation applications. Um, I don't think that's your first step. I, I think your first step is evaluate your current processes. A lot of people just they think we've got to automate, we've got to automate, we've got to automate. But until you have a good grasp of where you are, you don't really know how to get where, to where you want to be. And so when, when we talk with people about AP automation, one of the first things we recommend is let's do a deep dive into current processes. Getting a good understanding about what you're doing, where your hiccups are, and, and look, I know you're AP professionals and, and for the most part you guys have a very good understanding of what your processes are and where they work and where they don't work. This is typically not for your benefit. This is for the benefit down the road when you're going to sell this to leadership. You need to explain to them why we need to move to this situation. And if you can't help make them understand that the current processes are broken, it's going to be hard to convince them that you need to fix anything. So evaluating current process and getting a good understanding of where you are allows you to determine where I want to be and how I need to get there. That's when you can start evaluating you know, the process automation applications. Whether, you know, do we need to insource an option? Do we need to co-source? Which co-source means um, I may uh, license an AP workflow software but I'm going to have a third-party provider do my invoice receipt um, uh, you know, and, and open prep scan and data capture. Or I may want to maintain control over my invoices, so I'm going to receive all the invoices, open prep scan, and then I'm going to have someone host my workflow for me. Or you know, if you're large enough, if, if you've got uh, you know, um, enough volume or, or you know, once again, company culture can determine this. You may want to outsource the whole process. But once again, you've got to know where you are. You've got to know where you, be, you want to be before you can look at that. Part of, of, of developing your roadmap is you need to map out your priorities. You've got to get agreement with all the stakeholders within your organization on the scope of what you're trying to accomplish. Um, we spend a lot of time with AP professionals. And, and it's great, and, and you know, we walk into an organization and AP automation, if you talk to a, a shared services director, an AP manager, uh, some treasurers, some finance people, they are all about AP automation. You go talk to IT and you know what? They're really not into AP automation. They've got other things on their mind right now. And, and if you don't get their buy-in early on in the process, you're going to have a hard time getting this thing sold down the line. Um, and when I say sold, I'm not talking about the, the, the vendor selling you. I'm talking about you selling leadership that this needs to, to happen. So you've got to get an agreement from all the stakeholders within your organization. Um, you know, when you're evaluating your current process, you need to benchmark where you are against your peers. Um, you know, we talk to a lot of people that process 10,000 invoices a month and have 10 people in their AP, space, or in their, in their AP team. Um, you know, if you really benchmark yourself against your peers, you're going to see that, that you know, you're, not, you're not matching up and, and your, your costs are way out of whack with what the market shows should be standard or, or, and definitely not best practice. So you've got to have a good understanding of where you match up against your peers. Um, once you've, you've, you've you know, figured out where you are, you, you've got some, some agreement within the organization that, hey, our processes are broke. We need to look at options to go forward. We know where we stack up against our peers. We have an idea of, of what we want our future state to look like. Then we develop the plan. Now, you've got to, to 
you, you know, implementation, change management. Uh, you've got a lot of times we talk with people that we've been doing AP this way for 20 years. We've been doing AP this way for 30 years. It's, you know, why do we have to change? Especially your end users. You know, trying, trying to convince them that this is a process that's going to make it their life easier, not always um, easy for you. So you, you want to develop a plan. You want to lay out your implementation steps. And, and you want to figure out what's the best way to invest my capital and my IT resources. And that's once again looking at uh, you know, the in-source, co-source, outsource. And then you've got to manage the change. And you have to have a le executive leadership on board with this because like I was saying earlier, end users typically are resistant, very resistant to this type of change. Um, if you're in a decentralized model, you're taking their control over those invoices away. They feel like you're taking the control over their P&L away. So you've got to have executive leadership behind you mandating that this change is happening and you need to get on board. Um, that eliminates you know, the ability for your end users to derail your process. So the ultimate goal obviously of automation, we want to increase efficiency. We want to speed up the process, and we want to reduce cost. A long time ago, labor arbitrage was a buzzword. I don't like to, to talk about labor arbitrage when it comes to AP anymore for a couple reasons. Number one, <clears throat> I think it devalues AP in the eyes of the organization. Um, you're not talk, you, know, you don't hear, everybody wants to be lean, everybody wants to be efficient, but, but if you just look at labor arbitrage, it, you know, your people bring a lot more to the table than, than what they are given credit for. And so what we want to do is we want to transition them from the AP of today, which is very little analytics and a lot of transactional services, into the AP of tomorrow, which is a lot of analytics and very little transactional. We want to take you from being considered a cost center within the organization and turn you into a value add. And by doing that, you know, if you can do some spend analysis, if you can start you know, running some strategic reports around your spend, uh, around your vendors, uh, you know, your, your, your day, you know, days outstanding, all of that fun stuff, and really start increasing what you bring to the table, um, people start understanding what AP can do for an organization if it's run well. We're running on short on time, so I want to get to uh, some questions. I know we've got a few. Um, just before we do that, I want to tell you a little bit about Bank Tech, and then we're going to get to. I've, we've already got one question from Melanie, and I'll I'll let her answer that. And then if we have any more, you know, and we can run a little over, we can. Um, Bank Tech, we deliver financial transaction processing and content management services provisioned by our own technology solutions and decades of experience. So for Melanie, we actually do the invoice receipt prep scan, data capture, and we upload it to Birch Street, which is, is a third-party AP automation provider, and then Great Plains is their ARP. For other customers, we actually do the full AP automation process utilizing our own AP automation software. So we have a lot of capabilities. We're global, 35 centers throughout the world. We're located in Irving, Texas. If you have more questions you know, and we don't have time today to address them, please feel free to reach out to me or, or, or Sue Barnhill at Bank Tech, and we'll be happy to answer them in any way we can. Um, Melanie, there was a question for you. Um, it's from Jamie Reed. She asked, if invoices are sent to a third party, what kind of turnaround before they get back to AP or post to the ERP system to pay? Yes, so um, our timetable is that if they are, if the invoice are received by Bank Tech by, I think it's 8 a.m. their time, it will be, we're uh, guaranteed processing same day. So then uh, we have a, we have a, nightly integration into, from, from Bank Tech into our system Birch Street. So typically 24 hours, but depending on when, if we were to send an invoice to them at 5 p.m., we'd have, they have, they have a full business day to process and, um, and send it into our system. So it's pretty, pretty quick. Your, your standard SLA, Jamie, is 24 hours. Um, you know, your typical third party is, is 
starts doing mail runs early in the morning, typically around 5. Um, and, and depending on your, your AP software um, or your ERP, um, you can have multiple pickups. So for, for some, some uh, organizations, they're, they're actually pushing data into that system every 10, 15 minutes. Others only do pickups twice a day or once a day. So a lot of that can be customized to fit to be fit what uh, or to fit what you're trying to do. Um, 